whoops, didn't X out of iTunes quick enough. This is what fame does to a person. I've had some alcohol. I don't really drink alcohol and then do YouTube videos, but well, here I am, people. I'm dirty. I've poisoned my body. I don't even remember why I want to do a video right now. Wait, maybe it'll come to me if I read this. Oh my god. I had a... I don't know about telling, like, how much should I tell? This is my question about... about being on YouTube. Is like... How much should I tell of my personal experience? Because I'll do something will happen in my personal life and it will be empowering. And then I won't talk about it and it keeps affecting me. And then as soon as I talk about it, I feel like I've released the information into the crowd, but then it doesn't help me anymore to get by. So if I keep secrets, I can use them to my advantage. But if I open up and tell the truth, then all of a sudden it equalizes and I don't have the advantage anymore. Well. Here's the truth. <laughs> I had a conversation with Einstein two days ago. Now I'll explain it and let it dissipate into the crowd. And I won't get the advantage of what I've had for the last two days. Maybe. Yeah, probably. Um, my friend Kiff and Terry, they have a picture of Einstein on the wall. And Einstein's like, he looks wasted in the picture. He just, it's just his head. And he's looking straight forward like. It's just a photograph. And I was looking at this photograph and talking to it. Well, I wasn't really talking to it. I was just talking. And I was like going on and on, talking, talking. And then I would stop. And like that, like that, and listen like that, like just focus and listen. And what was happening was, I, he wasn't speaking, I wasn't hearing words, but I was like, I was like talking to Einstein saying, this is, you, you can, I know you can speak. I, you know, and I, I saw him blink a couple times, which was, was pretty bizarre because it was me like back and like just allowing like, and I, and I was like, I, if, I, if I was tripping right now, your mouth would be moving. Like I was saying that kind of stuff. And I knew, like, if I had done, like, LSD, or even probably if I had done, like, mushrooms, he would have been, like, talking. <laughs> but it wasn't hap that wasn't happening because I had done drugs. And I was just, like, listening to him. And he was, I was high, I'd smoked some weed a little bit. I think I'd smoked weed. Maybe, like, I'd smoked weed earlier in the day. And he... I would talk and I would say these things and then all of a sudden I would stop talking and listening and there would just be this counterpoint in my mind to whatever I had been saying there would be this genius level counterpoint and it was because like I, and whatever I was saying I would it was like I almost like I would counterpoint myself comfortably with Einstein's essence around me looking into his eyes I saw his genius I saw what he saw. I understood what he understood. I saw his understanding. And that level of understanding was counterpointing my own statements. Even though maybe it was, it was me counterpointing myself with his eyes, with his human stuff and this technology photographs and then now video is what's allowing us to reproduce it. Like there were a million Einsteins before Einstein, but they didn't have the technology to spread it out into the public. Like Einstein used video to explain his perspective to people and was able to communicate it to people. But before, before like writing, how could a physicist, how could there even be science before writing? You know, science, a lot of people start writing theories, but a written theory is so much less effective than a spoken theory. If you have a physicist that does the fucking math and, do, and understands it literally and figuratively and then explains it to you, you're just like, as the physicist is talking, especially a charismatic physicist like Einstein was 
fucking got a lot of women because he was so fucking in tune with things. I feel like I took on some of that essence when I looked at him and listened and talked and listened to him. It was really like I was listening to the essence of this physical body's eye genius. Not the eye, but the... It resides in this, which is why video is so effective. Okay, you know what? And that's helped me a lot the last few days, and it will probably continue to help me, but I really wanted to release that thought into the public because... This is a big development of what video is and what, I, and I was saying as I was looking at the thing, at the picture, sp I know if you are on video right now, I could be listening to you and I, and I was talking about like photography and, and the power of video and like what we're doing is we're really sending our genius to the people that can see it and creating a bond with them, uh, enabling them to trust us. but. It's still at a faux spot because video's not quite effective because although you're watching me and you're feeling the bond with me, I don't know you. I haven't met you yet, most likely. Maybe a few people I've met, but I haven't met you yet. And so I haven't created, from my perspective, the bond yet. So video is creating this strange imbalance. But I, I'm trying to work it out by getting on stick cam and like going to these big YouTube events. I'm like meeting the people and getting comfortable and, and feeling comfortable. I think the technology will get to a point where we can really like be in the same room perceptively and, and then it'll help. And then we can just, you know, who knows what's going after that man. One step at a time. Anyway, peace, my friends. I love you all.